How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to the first day of May. May 1st, 2025 is the date, 8.47 a.m. local time here in Texas. Latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a 4.6 right there in the uh, seismic gap zone between the Papua New Guinea area and also the Fiji Islands. Starting to fill in a little bit of earthquake uh, movement there for a 4.6. Also California here on the move around the San Andreas Fault with a 3.3 earthquake coming in this morning near Pinnacles that is associated with the creeping section of the San Andreas Fault. Basically a section there of the San Andreas Fault that uh, instead of locks for decades or centuries building up strain, it uh, periodically has earthquake activity on any given day or every couple weeks or so. Uh, but normally when earthquakes take place on this fault system here, the creeping section, it's a sign that the uh, San Andreas Fault here is on the move, especially when it's up in the three range like that. Uh, most of the time it's normally some smaller earthquakes in the one and lower two range, but it uh, looks like we got a little swarming going on here around that segment of the San Andreas Fault. There was a 3.3, the latest earthquake uh, there in uh, the San Andreas Fault area. Also Southern California getting some movement around the Garlock Fault shear zone and also up around the Ridgecrest area. Uh, nothing major going on there across Southern California. In fact, all those are smaller microquakes, nothing above 2.5. Uh, as far as activity above 2.5 elsewhere, Utah showing some shaking up here. Just to the southeast of Lake uh, Salt Lake City, Utah, 3.9. Fairly decent earthquake up there. Um, nothing big. It does look like it's outside of Provo. Uh, 8.6 miles here below the surface for that earthquake. Uh, further across the northern California region, a handful of smaller quakes here, including one in the last hour of that earthquake uh, for a 1.8 southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Of course, this is the area that's been uh, showing some tremor activity here in the last couple days. Let me show you guys the last week here. Of total, to, oh, not that one. We go to the uh, trimmer map real quick. Bring up the last week where it's been basically the last couple days here of trimmer counts being elevated across the southern end of the Cascadia, extreme southern end. It doesn't get much further south than this here, this little segment. So that's adding further strain up here across the locked area where we're seeing that current earthquake activity happen. Not Nothing big, but we are noticing a little bit of uh, strain quakes showing up here across that southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. So we'll continue to watch that. You know, who knows when that's going to pop, but obviously it's going to happen, I, I believe, after um, or during uh, elevated signs of tremor activity. 926 epicenters of tremor, southern end of the Cascadia in the last week. Uh, up across the uh, Washington and Oregon area, some smaller quake activity. Also one here, very shallow. Uh, that's associated with the strain here along the Cascadia surface quake for a two-pointer from yesterday. Uh, mostly smaller microquakes up there across the Cascade volcanoes. Nothing big going on. Uh, I know a few folks were talking about some earthquakes around Mount Hood. Uh, we'll check that out real quick, see what we have around the Mount Hood area. It's common to see earthquake activity out there. Here's the last, um, well, what do we got here for the uh, last, I think it's the last 30 days here of activity around Mount Hood. A total of 100 earthquakes, the largest of 1.6 here on the southern flank of Mount Hood. We've seen something similar last year and the year before in this area. Uh, they, they they go through little earthquakes and uh, it is a obviously a active volcano in terms of that it could produce uh, an eruption in the near term, but I think we would see near term, meaning the years or it could be decades, but we would see elevated um, inflation going on and a lot more earthquake activity than what we're seeing right now. So basically these smaller quakes happen periodically. Uh, in the last, oh, I don't know, what we got here, 10 hours, 12 hours or so, not a whole lot of earthquake activity being recorded there. This is some type of outside interference around that seismograph station um, and not seeing anything here in the last couple days. In fact, it looks like all of this is over a week old as far as uh, that earthquake activity. Uh, top, of, top of Palmer lift, nothing really going on. Some outside interference could be the could be them, uh, the lifts up there making some noise, but I don't see any earthquake activity there across the uh, Mount Hood area. 
but just checking in on that because a few folks wondering why there's been a hundred earthquakes around there, but same for Mount St. Helens. Um, you know, it's just common to see little earthquake swarms, but nothing of any um, abnormal activity for now. Across the oil field to Texas, still rocking and rolling out there in the uh, Permian Basin. Yellowstone National Park, nothing showing up there, but let's just double check. Make sure we got the latest information here. As far as earthquake activity goes, there's that 3.9 earthquake in Utah. Now that showed up quite nicely here on the Yellowstone seismograph stations. That time frame right here would match that earthquake in Utah down here, which sits a ways down, but it's about one o'clock in the morning or so. That matches the timestamp right here, uh, 011. Of course, this is gonna be um, a mountain time, so it would be one hour behind me since I'm in central time here in Texas right now. So that matches that, uh, but as far as local activity goes, not a whole lot of local activity, just that 3.9 showing up quite nicely there across the park. Uh, one earthquake maybe over here around Parker Peak, a couple smaller, very small earthquakes there, but really nothing major going on there across Yellowstone for now. A New Madrid seismic zone, one earthquake after midnight at 2.8. That uh, is the second earthquake here in the last couple days. Same area around Marston, Missouri, 2.3 yesterday and a 2.8 today. Of course, the New Madrid Seismic Zone, another hazardous area. It's right there, right smack dab in the middle of it. There across that region that's capable of producing some mid to upper sevens. And the last series of events was back in 1811, 1812. So just a friendly reminder here that the fault system is very much still alive and will produce uh, large earthquakes in the future. 21 earthquakes here in the last 30 days of all magnitudes. The largest magnitude probably going to go to that 2.8 that happened today. Uh, so just continue to watch that. I don't know if there's enough strain built up there in over 200 years, but uh, still we could see some larger activity on that at any given time. Uh, further out and about, eastern portion of the country, pretty quiet. A look at the world view as far as larger activity goes. Well, that goes to a 5.3 down there in the Solomon Islands region. One of the latest quakes uh, in the area there, but I think that matches the, let's see here. Actually, it's just to the, the 5.3 is to the northwest of the current activity, still in that little zone of quietness. So we're starting to fill in quite nicely uh, across this area. USGS not reporting that uh, newer quake. Actually, yeah, maybe they are. No, that's from a couple hours ago. That's six o'clock this morning. So it's a little weird. <clears throat> Maybe so. Yeah, that matches the uh, six point. Yes, yeah, six oh six a.m. earthquake. So, all right. Anyway, yeah, this I forgot. This is a combination here. Well, not a combination. It's the USGS solely uh, showing the data. So that would make sense for the latest earthquake. Um, does not have the EMSC model included on this globe which I still have to fix here, but uh, on the live stream, obviously we do have that combination. All right, let's see what else we have across the area. Pretty good cluster going on across the Indonesia Islands area as noted uh, to the current activity. Nothing really going on across the northwestern edge of the Pacific plate, it looks pretty quiet for now. Uh, Alaska region, some earthquake activity, really nothing of any abnormal movement. Um, just typical smaller microquake activity, which you know, it happens on any given uh, any given time out there. Let's take a look at the cascade or the uh, volcanoes there from the USGS monitored stations. And um, aside from your typical volcanoes, Kilauea volcano, and up here around the Great Sitkin and Mount Spur, which is you know just kind of having a little bit of earthquake swarming and some steaming up there around the vent area of that volcano, Mount Spur. Uh, nothing new to report out here across the area. Just uh, green across the board for the most part. So nothing of any abnormal activity. Let's go ahead and check space weather activity here from Solar Ham. Things are pretty quiet here across the board as uh, far as any flaring goes, but we are watching a massive sunspot here, 4079, which is currently facing the Earth. Uh, not directly, but it is within the Earth-directed view. And uh, let's take a look here at the complexity model, see what we got. Yeah, see really no signs of any type of uh, 
further strengthening. It almost looks like it's starting to split a little bit here in the middle. That would not be a good sign if we want some stronger solar flares. So we'll watch that here in the next 24 hours or so. That may be a sign that is starting to weaken further with that magnetic splitting. Uh, but we'll, like I said, we'll continue to watch it. I don't think we got any chances of X flare, mostly M flare activity, around 50% chance or so. Uh, and aside from that, the rest of the sunspots out there are pretty stable. No auroras there in the forecast for now. Uh, Forest Storm Prediction Center goes, got a slight risk out here again around Texas and Oklahoma. It just never ends, which is kind of neat, but they've gotten a lot of rain. I think they need a little break out here, northern Texas, especially into Oklahoma. A lot of rainfall. In fact, Oklahoma recording one of its um, wettest months on record there. So no shortage of rain out in this area of the uh, country. Got a 2% chance of some tornado activity down there across southeastern Oklahoma. Wind and some hail threats out here uh, where I'm at today. So, uh, But nothing majorly severe. Uh, let's see here what we got. I want to see if they reported this... Uh, Tornado from yesterday, well, decent funnel cloud. Uh, see, they call it, uh, they're calling it land spout. We've seen several of those, but this, the, the tornado that we caught yesterday appeared and it came right out of the wall cloud where the area of circulation would be. Um, and a lot of people seen it. For whatever reason, these guys are calling it land spout, which I don't think it was. Um, but I'm not going to argue with them. I know what I've seen and a lot of people seen it as well out there outside of Lubbock, Texas. Uh, let's see, aside from that, a lot of hail reports and some big time wind being recorded as well. Uh, aside from that, folks, um, we'll just continue to watch things here um, as the day goes on. Enjoy the first day of May. Keep an eye there on California with the San Andreas Fault there on the move. Some strain being re, uh, being reported there across Cascadia. I mean, it only makes sense here is that tremor activity is being elevated downstream into the subduction zone. Things upstream here along the locked area should uh, continue to build strain for the next big earthquake out here. And uh, these little earthquakes, just a friendly, you know, I shouldn't say a friendly sign. I should say a sign that strain is building up across the area. So we'll continue to watch it. Have a good day, folks. Enjoy your afternoon. Stay safe out there. And uh, we'll catch you guys out here for the Thursday night update. Have a good one. Say bye, Missy Mimi's. See you guys.